Our next thing we're going to do in class today is to find an inverse function. Uh, the way you find an inverse function is you take your original function, which in this case is f of x is equal to 7x minus 5. And we're going to follow two steps to uh, find our inverse function. So the first thing you do is we're going to switch x and y. Uh, as you see, there is no y in this equation, but what we do know is that f of x is equal to y. So we can rewrite our equation as y is equal to 7x minus 5. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch our variables. So wherever we have a y, we write an x. Wherever we have an x, we write a y. At this point in time, we've completed step number one. So next we're going to do is we're going to solve for y. So to do that, you just undo what's being done to your variables. So we'll add 5 to both sides. And we'll get x plus 5 is equal to 7y. And then next to get y by itself, we'll divide each side by 7. So we get y is equal to x plus 5 over 7. So that is actually the inverse function of our original function. But there's a special way to denote this. The symbol you use for the inverse function looks just like this. It looks like f to the negative 1 power of x. However, it does not represent an exponent of negative 1. It's just the symbol they use to represent the inverse function. So now that we've looked at one example, we'll try another one that might be a little bit more difficult. So here's example number two. Again, we're going to switch x and y. So I'll write x is equal to y to the third plus 1. After we do that, we're going to solve for y. So we subtract 1 from both sides. Get x uh, minus 1 is equal to y to the third. To solve for y, now what we need to do is we need to take the cube root of both sides. That's because it's the inverse operation. When we do that, you get y is equal to the cube root of x minus 1. And again, the way we denote the inverse is we'll say the inverse of f is f The inverse of our f function is going to be the cube root of x minus 1. Lastly, we'll look at one more example. It might be a little bit more difficult. And let's see if we can have some success with this. Again, the first thing you do to find an inverse function is you switch x and y. So g of x, we'll say is y. So we'll put an x there is equal to 5 over y plus 4. So in solving for y, we can have multiple steps in this problem. But first thing I would do is subtract 4. And I get x minus 4 is equal to 5 over y. To get y by itself, uh, I don't like the fact that it's in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by y. So I get y times x minus 4 is equal to 5. And then my last step to get y by itself is I can divide by x minus 4. So our inverse function in this problem will be 5 over x minus 4. Now, as you can notice, the first couple problems, it might have been pretty easy to go back and look and see x is being cubed and added by 1, so cube root subtracting by 1, or in this one, x being multiplied by 7, subtracted by 5, added by 5, and divided by 7. Whereas in this problem right here, it might be a little bit more difficult to see that these functions are actually inverses. 